The UK is limping towards recession and is amongst the most vulnerable of the major economies to a tightening of monetary policy. That's a quote from our guest today, Harry Colvin from Longview Economics. Harry, welcome, welcome back. Uh, we've spoken to you before uh, about the economy here in the UK. I know you've been working on this idea of the UK edging tentatively towards recession now for several months. Um, why? What's going on that gives you this impression? Well, the UK's got one of the worst economic models in the Western world, and of course that hasn't been helped by 10 years of very cheap money, which has kept lots of zombie companies alive. They've been allowed to grow and fester as a share of the corporate base. And as a result, we've not really had a very good investment spending outcome or productivity outcome, and therefore no real wealth creation in this cycle. And instead, the drivers of growth have been things like consumer credit, and less savings and things like that. So the UK is particularly vulnerable to anything that would cause households to retrench. So tighter monetary policy, falling house prices, things like that. Yes, in your piece you mentioned a lot about the yield curve and I think your first chart here, you talk about UK banks lending rate against the, the, the yield curve. Explain what's going on here and, and how this bolsters and supports your argument. Well the interesting thing is that on the surface the Bank of England of course haven't hiked rates in the past 10 years, net net. But of course we've had quite a lot of tightening of what we would call global monetary policy, really driven by the Fed and proxied by the flattening of the US curve. And of course other sovereign bond markets are highly correlated with the US. So it's not just US curve flattening, we've also had UK curve flattening. And that's put a lot of pressure on UK commercial bank profit margins and it's created some tightening of credit conditions domestically in the UK. And really what the chart is showing is firstly the yield curve um, and then it's shown with the change in the lending rate that commercial banks are offering to households and we've inverted the curve, uh, inverted the axis. So whenever we get a flattening yield curve, in other words, we get slightly less attractive bank rates. You, you've got here the, the, the black line shows this, doesn't it? And that's the spread, isn't it, between the two uh, points on the yield curve, isn't it? The two to ten. That's right. And it's getting closer and closer together. Um, so explain a bit more about, yes, how so, we should read this. So in other words, as the Fed carry on raising short rates, and we continue to see a flattening of curves in the West, with the UK curve flattening as well, then we'd expect to see the year-on-year -year change in bank rates offered to households to be increasing. And that would be illustrated by that blue line going lower on the chart, or in other words, going higher uh, relative to what that rate was mm -hmm. a year ago. In other words, money for households is getting tighter as curves flatten. And that undermines the credit growth story, it undermines the consumption growth story. Yeah. What other factors um, could cause households to retrench? Because there's a number of things going on here. Well, one of the factors we've had recently is a, a weaker currency, and we've imported a lot of goods inflation, and that's caused a squeeze on real incomes. And so we've had a little bit of retrenching as a result of that. The other key point uh, and key point of vulnerability for the UK is if we see ongoing weakness in house price growth or even shrinking house prices, uh, which would cause a negative wealth effect and also probably result in households retrenching. Yeah. Um, let's go on to chart two. Real UK M1 growth. This is money supply growth against consumer credit. Um, again, I'll ask the same question. How do you read this to give you an indication about your idea that the UK is limping towards recession? Well, the key point here is growth in M1 largely reflects growth in what we call demand deposits. So these are deposits at commercial banks that you and I have in our current accounts. And as banks take those deposits and make loans with them, then they grow the monetary base, they, M1 grows. Uh, and so clearly M1 growth slowing is telling you that for some reason at the margin, banks are, coming, are becoming less able or less willing to take those deposits and turn them into loans. And that should result in slower credit growth. And that's why the red line, which is growth in M1, is reasonably well correlated with credit growth, which appears to be, to be rolling over. What about money supply growth, the other measures, the M2, the M3, the M4? How does this dovetail with your argument? Well, they're all really telling you about the same thing, which is how quickly money is whipping around the system. How fast is credit growth? How, how cheap is money? And of course, during recessions and times of crises, usually brought about by tight money, we see slowing money growth. What are the net, what's the net effect of this if I, if I want to, to, to borrow money as a consumer? I'm thinking about the comments you made about house prices and mortgage approvals and so forth. Presumably this pushes 
rates up, doesn't it? So if I go to the bank in you know, months to come, I'm going to be asked more interest to pay to get... Well, that's right. If the Bank of England are going to continue raising rates, then we should see higher, higher rates on offer by commercial banks. Uh, and actually, if you look at average mortgage rates, they're just starting to tick a little bit higher. So this is the tightening of money beginning to feed into the banking system and, 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 and impact households. It's just beginning, and it probably carries on as the Bank of England raises rates. Well, let, let's, let's bring up your fourth chart, because I think this involves the yield curve and mortgage approvals. Um, and you can see here the, um, uh, the red against the blue line. Um, the blue line, I think, is the, is the curve, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yep. And the red is the mortgage approvals. Yes, so, so mortgage approvals, I think, are a very good barometer of um, the, the health of the UK economy in a cyclical sense, as is the yield curve, as is money supply. Really, the UK is all about housing and cheap money, which result in consumption. We're really a consumption story in the UK. Uh, and so it's interesting that these two things are correlated. Uh, so clearly, tighter money and, 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 and lower mortgage approvals, lower mortgage lending, uh, and lower house prices all result in a, in, a, in a sort of negative consumption story for the UK. Yeah. Let's just return to the story about uh, where this tightening is coming from. We have seen interest rates go up, of course, here in the UK at the back end of last year. They unwound the Brexit cut that we had back in 2016, uh, which some say was ill-advised in the first place. So effectively puts us back to where we were. Um, just explain about the tightening process from here. Are we tightening because other, the, the Fed is tightening? Is that, is that we are feeling the effect of that? Does that mean the Bank of England's not going to move again? Or are you fearful the Bank of England is going to move? And if they go into move when we've all got this debt and we're paying higher interest, that's going to collapse the economy. What, what, what's the situation now for the Bank of England? Well, the Bank of England's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Because if they don't raise rates, we're likely to get more currency weakness and import inflation and get an income squeeze and undermine the consumption story in the UK. If they do raise rates, and uh, they would probably do that to put a bid under the currency, then they risk undermining the credit growth um, and house price story domestically. So I think it's a very difficult position for the Bank of England uh, that they're in. Um, and, 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 and probably, as they've been alluding to, they, they end up doing a few interest rate hikes, and, and we, we're clearly vulnerable to that. A, a few? From where well, we over the course of the next couple of years, yeah. Right, OK. Um, but that's the very thing that could lead us into this recession that you're, you're warning about. Um, let's take a look at sterling against the US dollar, if we can. And I'll ask you the question. I know you're not a foreign exchange strategist or an analyst here. I'm not going to ask you about um, buying and selling necessarily. But what, is, what are we pricing in at this point here? Do you think the markets are aware of what you're looking at in terms of the potential direction for the UK economy? Well, I think the ebb and flow of the currency very much has been driven by, by Brexit news. Right. Um, clearly, recession risk, as it, as it becomes more apparent, and we're not calling for an imminent recession in the right. UK. I think the, the point is the UK economy is more vulnerable than other Western economies to, to recession. But as that becomes more apparent, then I suspect you should see weak, sterling weakness on the back of that. And interestingly, there have been a lot of net long speculative positions in, in sterling recently. And of course, the flip side of this is, is the Fed, which are raising rates. So sterling dollar uh, is, 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 of course, driven largely by uh, what's happening on the US side of it which mm. is higher rates in the US. Mm. OK, so let's just round it off by following up on that point you mentioned about timing and so forth here. And clearly, you're, you're not going for something which is going to begin in the third quarter of this year. Um, but what should we be aware of in terms of the signposts to indicate that we are going towards recession at some point? And when do you think that recession could kick in if what your projections are, are showing you are correct? Well, the things to watch closely are housing-related data and mm. credit-related data. Things like mortgage applications are very useful. They're a very good leading indicator of house price growth. So I think we've got to watch that, as well as all these money supply and liquidity uh, type metrics as well. They'll give the earliest indication as to what stage we're at in this cycle or how close to the end of it we are. Mm. OK, all right, uh, Harry, it's a pleasure. Thanks indeed for dropping by. Uh, talking about your paper uh, limping towards uh, the potential recession here in the UK. That's uh, Harry Colvin from Longview Economics. Subscribe to IG for educational content, company insight, financial analysis and expert commentary.